What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be diving deep into the stock attachments in Black Ops 6. Since I've already seen a ton of misconceptions here, a lot of confusion surrounding these, understandably so, the advanced stats don't really display exactly what these do super well. So we're going to be clearing all of that up today, keeping in mind we're just focusing on the mobility aspects of the stocks. There are a couple stocks that impact your flinch resistance, that will be covered in a separate video where we're going to dive deep into flinch. And then another quick thing to point out, I will also cover the Ranger underbarrel grip, simply because that's the only other universal attachment that directly impacts your movement speeds, as far as I'm aware based on my testing and what the menus are stating. And with that out of the way, let's just dive right into this with the no stock attachments, which keep in mind, sometimes the names of these will vary a little bit, like with the XM4 for instance, the no stock is instead the light stock, so you might see some variance in names, but they do the same things. And with this, it states that it improves your hipfire movement speed, which is pretty self-explanatory. Your movement speed in general, which is very vague and actually quite confusing in this game, because typically you'd expect that to apply to like all movement speeds, whether you're aiming, sprinting, walking, tactical sprint. But turns out that's not the case, and we'll look at that in just a little bit. And then it also helps with our strafing movement speed. And that's another area where there is some confusion surrounding this. That has to do with your side-to-side -side movement speed, but it turns out that doesn't apply to all of your stances. So let's have a look at the results of all of my testing with the C9 SMG. And with this, comparing the no stock to the base C9, the only improvements we're seeing here are to our base walking speed, as well as our walking strafe speed. And then on top of that, we're actually seeing a nice improvement to our tactical sprint speed, which is interesting because that wasn't stated anywhere within the menus, at least not specifically. Also, even though this says this helps with movement speed, and like I said, I assume that would just be movement speed in general, it does nothing at all to improve your aim walking speed or your sprint movement speed. So a little bit confusing if you're just reading those pros and cons. Now, another thing I wanted to point out here, since there is a lot of confusion surrounding this, this is your strafe speeds. It turns out strafe speed is just a multiplier based on the corresponding movement speed. So with our walking strafe speed, for instance, you just multiply your base walking speed by 0.88, and that'll give you a walking strafe speed. Whereas your aiming strafe speed, it's a slightly different multiplier, at least on the C9 here. You have to multiply your aim walking speed by 0.82 in order to get your aiming strafe speed. And it's the same thing with your sprint strafe speed. There's a different multiplier attached to that. So once again, those menus can be a little bit confusing because it says it helps with your strafing movement speed, but it only helps with one version of your strafing movement speed, and that is if you're walking. In either case, let's get into our next stock. This is the Infiltrator stock, one of my personal favorites. And this one just says that it helps with your aim walking movement speed. And with the C9, we can see that it does improve our aim walking movement speed by quite a nice margin here. It bumps it from 3.6 meters per second up to 4.2 meters per second. Keeping in mind the mobility data stated in the advanced stats doesn't always align with what you actually experience in game. These are the actual values that I have hand tested myself. But that's an almost 17% improvement and that's quite a fast aim walking speed. And since our aim down sight stray speed is based on a multiplier of the corresponding value, that will also increase alongside our increase to our aim walking speed. So this does actually improve your ability to strafe side to side in a gunfight while aiming down sight. And that's a part where I think a lot of people were confused. They were saying, why would you worry about aim walking speed when it doesn't help with your aim down sight strafe speed? But it does. And you'll see this actually helps the most out of any of the stocks when it comes to that aim down sight stray speed. As for the next stock, this is the balance stock and it is quite popular right now because it looks like it has a lot of pros attached to it. It improves our strafing movement speed, our movement speed in general, apparently, our hip fire movement speed, and our aim walking movement speed. So let's once again have a look at the actual results here. And in this case, we saw a bit of an improvement to our base walking speed at 5.4 meters per second. Not as much of an improvement as we saw with no stock, but still nice. Then when it comes to our aim walking speed, it also helps in this area, up to 3.9 meters per second on the C9, which it's worth noting, that's not as much as the Infiltrator stock. So if you are trying to strafe in gunfights as effectively as possible, the Infiltrator is the better option. And then it has zero impact on your sprint speed or your tactical sprint speed. So in my eyes, at least, while the balance stock isn't bad, it isn't quite as good as the menus make it out to be, at least in my eyes. And this just leaves us with one final stock that actually improves our movement speed. We did skip over the heavy stock since that only improves flinch resistance and has no impact on mobility. But this last stock is the combat stock, which also helps with flinch resistance. But on top of that, we get a small improvement to our aim walking movement speed. And taking a look at that, we actually get the same improvement to this area as the balance stock at 3.9 meters per second, which again is not quite as good as that infiltrator stock for aim walking speed or aim down sight strafe speed. 
And there we go, those are the results with the C9 at least. And I hope this shows why I personally lean toward that infiltrator stock over anything. I just feel it helps the most in actual gunfights. Although I've gotta say the no stock attachment did surprise me with that really nice improvement to the tactical sprint speed. And therefore I think that's another excellent option as well if you're just trying to get around the map as aggressively as possible. But of course, even though this testing took a lot of time, I wanted to make sure I wasn't just testing one gun. I also wanted to select a gun from a different category. And of course I went with assault rifles since SMGs and assault rifles are the most popular and I tested the XM4 and instead of going through each one of these individually here are all of the results of my testing with the XM4 and there weren't any big surprises here compared to the C9 all of the same values are affected for the corresponding stocks however the percentage change is actually a bit different with assault rifles compared to SMGs it appears so let's have a look at those differences while just sort of recapping what each of these stocks do with actual measured percentage values. Keeping in mind, I did round a little bit with some of these just to get some cleaner numbers here. So they might be off by a percentage or two, but this is really just designed to give you a good indication of generally what each of these stocks do on SMGs versus assault rifles. And with the no stock attachment, with SMGs, we can see about a 15% improvement to our base walk speed with SMGs, whereas with ARs, it's a 20% improvement and our tactical sprint speed is improved by 25% for both of these. And that's really where the true power of no stock comes in. Next with the infiltrator stock, we see about a 17.5% improvement to our aim walking speed with SMGs and a roughly 20% improvement with assault rifles. Whereas for our aim down sight stray speed, SMGs are improved by about 20%, whereas ARs are improved by about 22.5%. Then with the balance stock, for everything aside from our walking stray speed, we get a bit of a better improvement with the assault rifles versus the SMGs with these. But in all cases, they're fairly minor improvements compared to the ones we've been looking at previously. They generally range between 8 to 12.5%, with the one exception being the walking stray speed on assault rifles. And then finally, with the combat sock, we see a bit of an improvement to our aim walking speed, 8% with SMGs and 11% with assault rifles. And that's gonna wrap it up for the mobility stats for all of these stocks. However, like I said at the beginning, there's also one more universal attachment that does impact movement speed, and this is the Ranger foregrip in the underbarrel category. And with this one, it states that it improves your sprinting movement speed as well as horizontal recoil control. And based on my actual testing, not the in-game stats, which again, they're not really perfectly accurate to what you experience in-game, so I trust my values more than what the game states. With this, we see an improvement to both our sprint speed and our tactical sprint speed. With SMGs, it's a 5% improvement to sprint speed and 4% improvement to tactical sprint speed. Whereas with assault rifles, it's a 4% improvement to sprint speed and a roughly 2.5% improvement to our tactical sprint speed. So not a bad option at all. This is the only one that directly targets sprint speed in the game. It's actually kind of interesting, and I was surprised to see that none of the stocks had any impact whatsoever on our standard sprint speed. So as a result, if you're looking for maximum mobility, you'll likely want to pair the Ranger foregrip with one of the stocks. And there we go. That's finally going to wrap it up for this video with all of the stock data that I collected for you guys. Hopefully this clears up a few misconceptions, gets you on the right track when it comes to selecting your stock attachments in the game. Like I said earlier, the top two I'm going to be aiming for are the no stock attachment if I'm just trying to get from point A to point B as fast as possible due to that tax sprint speed increase or the infiltrator stock if I'm trying to strafe as effectively as possible in gunfights. And with that, this is where I'm curious to hear from you guys in those comments down below. First off, were you guys surprised by any of the results I shared with you guys today? I know I personally was as I was testing them. And second, now that you've seen these stats, what are your go-to stocks going to be going forward? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.